So um, in our lab, uh, we develop different MEMS sensors. We uh, package them in systems and we try to use them for biomedical imaging. Uh, today, uh, I'm uh, going to present about uh, photoacoustic imaging with PMUTs. Uh, I'll start with a brief introduction to photoacoustic imaging and uh, what PMUTs are, uh, go through the fabrication and basic calculation of PMUTs, and uh, we'll talk about photoacoustic imaging and what we have seen so far in this direction. Uh, so, uh, photoacoustic imaging is basically a combination of two different fields. On one hand, it is optical imaging, and on the other side, it is ultrasound imaging. Uh, optical imaging uh, basically has a lot of advantages over other options like MRI, X-ray, CT scan, and PET in terms of having very low energy as compared to them, and yet picking information <coughs> such as like functional metabolic or uh, biomarker information, which is very relevant uh, for uh, biomedical applications. But uh, it's limited in depth as, as you try to go for more depth, particularly beyond one millimeter, you lose resolution and uh, the information is not uh, very good. Uh, on the uh, other side, uh, there is ultrasound imaging where the resolutions are good even at depth. Uh, so the way photoacoustics works is uh, you take a nanosecond uh, pulse laser or light source, uh, shine the object wherever it's absorbed. Uh, in case of uh, tissue or in case of a human or animal body, it's mostly absorbed by blood, uh, oxygenated or uh, otherwise. And that generates some pressure. That pressure is picked by a bunch of ultrasound transducers. And uh, from that information, you can then create an image of the pressure generated to the body and hence the map of optical absorption through the body. Um, so uh, now coming over to ultrasound and MEMS, uh, over last 15 to 20 years, uh, MEMS has dramatically changed the ultrasound landscape by making uh, the transducers possible on chips. Uh, making them wideband and uh, being able to integrate with smartphones directly. Uh, CMUTs have progressed quite a lot uh, over the last 20 years and uh, all sorts of applications have been explored, including photoacoustic imaging. PMUTs are relatively less mature in this direction and uh, in terms of uh, slightly deep photoacoustic imaging, uh, this is in fact the first result with PMUTs as far as I know. So the way any uh, typical PMUT works, as Costa already uh, kind of covered uh, uh, in his talk, is that you have a bunch of layers, uh, mainly require at least two of them, one which is any, any material which doesn't do much, another piezoelectric material, you apply voltage across the piezoelectric material, that voltage causes generation of in-plane stresses. These in-plane stresses lead to a bending movement, and that bending movement causes flexural, uh, flexural uh, mode of vibration in the membrane. Uh, so this uh, kind of vibration will be maximum when the location of this bending movement is at the point of maximum slope in the vibration mode, uh, which happens to be around 65 to 70 percent of the vibration of the uh, total membrane. Um, in this case, we have uh, fabricated PMUTs with 125 micron diameter uh, and 10 micron uh, silicon uh, as the passive layer uh, and around 650 nanometer thick PZT as the active layer. Uh, the resonance uh, expected is around 10 megahertz from these calculations, uh, from like just in-air resonance is around 10 megahertz, but underwater, of course, you will have some shift as again Costa mentioned in his talk. Uh, and that leads to slightly different frequency in RP. The array design uh, for the PMUTs that I uh, used uh, is looks like this, uh, having 80 elements. Each element is a linear uh, combination of multiple PMUT cells. Individual PMUT cell is 8, 125 microns, and they are placed in a staggered manner to have to achieve as high uh, fill factor as possible. Uh, giving around 150 micron pitch from one element to next. Earlier during my PhD, I was working with low frequency PMUTs. For this case, we targeted 
the highest you can see we have been able to do so far. The process goes like this. You start with the SY wafer and uh, first deposit SiO2 on both sides. Uh, put bottom electrode, which in this case is uh, platinum uh, with a titanium adhesive layer. Uh, then you deposit PZT, which is a very challenging uh, task. Uh, in this case, we deposit it by sol gel cotton. Uh, after multiple iterations, we are somewhere there. Uh, after that, we uh, do top uh, lithography to get a pattern and put electrodes on the top side. Uh, so now you have electrodes available on top and bottom to apply voltage across the piezo layer. Uh, next is we define window on the back side and use DRI to get rid of uh, the handle uh, part of the wafer, leaving behind a membrane to vibrate. Um, so the finished device looks something like this. Uh, the device is integrated. For now, we have wire bonded it on a pin grid array. Uh, as you can see, we haven't been able to wire bond all the way. Uh, we are still facing some troubles and. We were also limited in uh, number of channels we could acquire at the point uh, in parallel. So uh, I'll, I'll show uh, uh, going ahead that we are pretty much uh, like making do. We are making do with uh, just one element later on to get some imaging done. So in this case, uh, we, we do the basic characterization. Uh, I'm not going into details about LDV uh, or uh, impedance measurements. That's uh, useful. Uh, in this case, we are interested in using these underwater, so we directly went ahead and used, uh, we just want to check if, if they work. So in this case, uh, we use a bulk ultrasound transistor, throw sound on top uh, from, from the top, and uh, we can see that we can listen to the sound, so we know that the PMAT is uh, working in principle. We also kind of estimate it, like it's a rough estimation of the received sensitivity uh, by knowing the pressure that is being generated by the bulk transistor, which is measured by a hydrophone, and then uh, using that to uh, and, and combining that with the amount of voltage we, we, we receive here to figure out that uh, the receive sensitivity is around a half a millivolt per kilopascal, which is very low. So I believe there is a lot of scope for improvement in, in these transducers. And we have done so, as I will show later uh, uh, in the talk. Uh, so for a very quick measurements uh, and, and just to see as a proof of concept whether these can pick photocaustic signals or not, uh, we, uh, we we use a laser uh, which is designed for photocaustic applications, uh, and we direct it towards a PMOT which is sitting underwater, and we place a bunch of pencil leads in between. Uh, the, the laser, uh, in this case, uh, the repetition rate is limited to 10 hertz, um, and uh, this is the setup. Uh, this is the laser. The PMOT is in the box and there's water there and we have a bunch of pencil leads in between. The pencil leads will absorb the light and they will generate the pressure and the sound will be picked by uh, PMUDs. Uh, th th these, were, uh, these are the very first results where we could see that we can indeed pick the photocaustic pulse. Uh, as we change the gain uh, on the receive uh, side of the PMUD, we can see that there is a change uh, in this uh, and it changes with, uh, as we move the pencil leads around and so on. Uh, we optimize it a little bit more and we look at a single pulse. We see the bandwidth of the pulse to be around 4.5 megahertz with a center around 7 megahertz. So mostly the, the 7 megahertz frequency is because of uh, water loading and bandwidth of 4.5, 8 megahertz is decent for photoacoustic imaging. So we went ahead and uh, uh, put together a setup to see uh, uh, if we can do B mode photoacoustic imaging with this. Because we don't have multiple channels working in parallel, uh, what we are doing over here is we connected one of the channel, uh, one of the PMUT element uh, with a receive component, and uh, we are we, we mounted the mounted agar gel phantom having embedded pencil leads on uh, XYZ stays, which just goes in one direction. So as the phantom moves in this direction, uh, we uh, pick the pressure generated uh, as it's going along with uh, around 200 micron step for around 1.5 to 2 centimeter. Um, so 120 such lines are picked. That is equivalent to as if, uh, you, if let's say you had an element over here, and in this scenario you generate some pressure and pressure is picked by this element. The next element over here can be emulated if instead the phantom is moved back by the same step, assuming the light illumination stays same. <coughs> 
So uh, the 128 channels data uh, hence captured will look something like this. It's not very clear over here, uh, but uh, you will see these sorts of streaks. Uh, and uh, as it's done in ultrasound imaging all the time, uh, you kind of uh, triangulate the position of the sound source of the sound, which is done by uh, taking into account the time delays for sounds coming from different locations. Uh, by doing so, you end up getting uh, image. Uh, so this is the beam formed image in which you can then see the locations of pencil leads clearly, uh, which works as a proof of concept. Uh, in fact, uh, as deep as uh, around 2.5 centimeter in this case. Okay. Okay. Um, so, um, but in any case, this, this is the last, uh, pretty much the last slide. Uh, uh, going ahead, we have now put together linear arrays in uh, in a light guide. So, so, this is a light guide where light comes out from these two rectangles, uh, and through optical fibers, a bundle of optical fibers, it's connected to a laser source on the other end. Uh, so, light comes out. So, now this is a uh, a complete photoacoustic probe in making. Uh, it will be a handheld probe which is designed for transrectal imaging applications, which are mainly targeted towards uh, prostate cancer imaging. Uh, in this case, we have the linear array wire bonded to multiple points, and I'm still working on wiring them together to have uh, multiple elements, and then we are working on the data acquisition of all of them together to get uh, continuous images. Uh, with the linear scanning, we can already see that it, it seems to be working. We can pick the image of a single uh, human here, and we can pick the images from pencil leads. So yeah, we are kind of getting there. In conclusion, uh, I could, we could see, we, we could fabricate PMRs uh, with around 125 micron cell diameter, which showed around 7 megahertz center frequency with 4.8 megahertz bandwidth. Uh, we could use these for B-mode imaging by linear scanning, and uh, we could detect pencil leads in that. So it's kind of the first step towards uh, building photoacoustic imaging systems. That's my talk. Thank you, everyone. And I thank all my friends. I thank NFS staff at ISC Bangalore, where I fabricated these PMRs, and uh, my collaborators uh, and the funding agencies.